Hey guys, it's Orn Lou, and it has been a little while since I have updated the uh, Trash Units tier list, so I thought, hey, why not uh, give this an update, because the last time I did it, we didn't have, I think, like any of the new civs, or maybe we just had Burgundians and Sicilians, and there have been a lot of balance changes and, you know, meta shifts and, and stuff like that. So uh, before I just dive right into it, I do, I guess, want to clarify what exactly is a trash unit because it sounds like something that's bad but really in the world of aoe a trash unit just means a military unit that does not cost gold so it is easy to create in the late game in 1v1s when gold is running low so at a very basic level this means skirmishers uh halberdiers and hussars uh those are sort of your three core units although some other civilizations have some other special things going on and we'll be getting to those in due course so just to give a brief rundown of what the tiers are uh s tier is just you know your basic very very best trash uh you know units these are typically civs that are very difficult to stop in the late game when it comes to a trash battle in a 1v1 a tier you have something that's super super good but you're also missing like one pretty important tech so it can't really be s tier uh b tier is either you're like mostly there with the you know the trash unit upgrades at, like late game economy bonuses are all going to be factored in here as well uh but there is you're either missing uh, a particularly strong bonus or you're missing some sort of important tech c tier is you usually have like one to two fully upgraded trash units and like maybe a strong late game economy but other than that, it's not really the strength of the civilization. D tier, not the greatest late game, but even some civs in D tier possibly have like one really strong trash unit. It's just that their other ones aren't that great. Um, and then F tier are just the civs that you really don't want to be getting into a late game, you know, very little to no gold scenario with. So with that in mind, let's get right into this. Starting with the Aztecs, Aztec privilege going up to S tier. Nope, they are going down to the F tier. Aztecs, they don't love being out of gold. Um, your skirmishers are missing the ring archer armor and thumb ring upgrades. Um, but you do have at Ladl, uh, which can be pretty helpful. But still, missing that last armor does mean you are somewhat vulnerable to ranged units, as you are just taking a lot more damage from arbalests than you would otherwise be doing. So it's like their skirms are possibly better than average, but not always. Uh, you miss halberdier. Yes, your pikemen get plus four attack, but that's not really enough to compensate for missing halberdier. And then you just don't get hussars, any scout units at all. And having that food dump in the late game is just really, really, really important. So yeah, F tier for Aztecs. Bengalis are going to be one step up. Uh, yeah, nope, nope. One step up in the D tier. So your elite skirmishers just miss thumb ring, which isn't the end of the world. They're more or less fully upgraded. But you do miss the Hussar upgrade, and you do miss the uh, plate mail armor upgrade for your halberdiers, making them vulnerable to enemy ranged units. There just isn't really anything that's like especially great here. I mean, none of your units are technically fully upgraded. The closest thing are your skirmishers, but then there just isn't any real bonus here. You could argue that maybe Mahayana counts in their favor in the late game because you uh, can have more villagers. But still, trash units are not really the strength of the Mengalis, in my opinion. Berbers going to be going in the A tier. Uh, Berbers are really strong in late game scenarios. Now, one of the most important things for the civilization in, like, post m 1v1s is that you can retain camel archers really effectively, uh, in that you make camel archers, they're a super powerful unit, and you can keep them alive really easily because they're fast, they're ranged, and they can even regenerate HP. Now, that isn't really the point of this video. When it comes to just their pure trash side of things, you get hussars that are 20% off, very, very good. Uh, you even have fully upgraded elite skirmishers and the potential for the elite genitor. So again, good options uh, there as well. Uh, you just missed the halberdier upgrade, which is really, really important. So that does prevent them from being in the S tier, but they are still a very strong A tier civ and one of the scariest civs for, uh, you know, late imp 1v1s. Bohemians. Nope. Going to be in the C tier. So Bohemians, their trash uh, tech tree is looking like you have uh, elite skirmishers that are basically fully upgraded. They just miss thumb ring. Your light cav are really underwhelming. You miss bloodlines, you miss hussar, and you miss plate barding armor. 
Uh, but then you do have your halberdiers, which are fully upgraded and additionally get plus 25% bonus damage. So the halbs are really good, the skirmishers are, you know, solid, and it's just you really lack that mobility option, which makes Bohemians struggle a lot in the late game on open maps. Uh, you just don't have a very fast army. Makes them super deadly on closed maps where having fast armies isn't really a factor, but in those late game open maps, it's just not really, again, something that the Bohemians love being in. Going to be joining them in a similar vein is the Britons. So the Britons, also in C tier, uh, your Halbs are generic, fully upgraded. Your elite skirmishers miss thumb ring, but do have one extra range possible with Yeoman. Uh, and your light cav miss bloodlines and the Hussar upgrade. So kind of similar to Bohemians, I would say it's a bit more well-rounded of a trash tech tree, but no um, real, nothing really that stands out. I mean, the fully upgraded Halbs is nice. Skirms are fine, your light cav are really underwhelming. It's just nothing that, like, really is super sexy. Oh, I forgot to mention with Bohemians. Um, yeah, Bohemians also have the potential for trash monks, but this usually isn't seen that much in 1v1s just because it, it comes in very, very late. But it, it is something that the Civ has, but still not going to be going above the C tier. Um, but back to Britons. Uh, yeah, Britons, nothing really that stands out with them too much, uh, but it, it's, it's decent enough. It's just not very mobile. Bulgarians going to be going in the A tier. So you have uh, Halbs that are just fully upgraded, Skirmishers that miss the Ring Archer armor upgrade, and that is why they're not in the S tier. But then you do have Hussars with Stirrups, which are the second fastest attacking land unit, or tied for the second fastest attacking land unit. Um, just super, super strong uh, rating unit, even decent in combat just because it attacks so fast. And that is definitely really shining with the Bulgarians in the late game. Your Halbs being fully upgraded is just another important aspect of it. But they do miss out on that top tier spot because ranged units, especially strong Cav Archers, can be really difficult for Bulgarians to deal with in the late game. Unless you uh, are having like Siege Onagers or something like that. But chances are you're not really getting to Siege Onagers late game in a 1v1 on open maps. And if you're playing closed maps then you don't really have any answers to your opponent's, like, heavy siege either. So, like, that's that's a whole different issue. Uh, but Bulgarians, definitely, I think, a strong A-tier contender for Trash Wars on, uh, you know, your sort of generic land map. Now, Burgundians are going to be in the C-tier, and this one is, like, where I'm kind of, like, eh on. You have fully upgraded Halbs, Skirms that miss uh, Ring Archer armor and Thumb Ring as well as uh, Hussars that are cheaper to upgrade, but you do miss Bloodlines. Why do I think that they are above D tier? And this is where, like, I'm kind of eh, is because you have the Relic bonus that generates food on your Relics, and you also have the ability to get Burgundian Vineyards. So you're just much more able to sustain any sort of, you know, composition in the late game. And although this, like, isn't really about just, like, post-imp, you know, 1v1 strength, It you can't really separate just how good a trash unit, like a, a Civ's trash line is, with how good their late game is. And even when it comes to trash, it means that you're very consistently able to get full upgrades on all your units, which is really important in, you know, any late game scenario. So I do, th I am gonna, I guess you could call cheat and put it uh, Burgundians in the C tier, but... Yeah, it's that this one is less about the tech tree and more about the late game economy that allows your uh, trash units to shine that much more. Because again, although these things are distinct, they are related. All right, Burmese, they are going to be our first B tier trash sieve. Now they have uh, halbs that get plus three attack for free. Very, very strong. It doesn't help them too much versus cavalry, but really helps them a lot versus like any other melee unit or just anything that they can get in close against. And then you do have Hussars, which remember now can get uh, five extra damage versus Archers with the Monopore Cavalry upgrade. So those guys can be really deadly in the late game. And then, of course, you do have your Skirmishers that miss Leather Archer armor and Ring Archer armor and also Thumb Ring. So that's what really prevents Burmese from being higher. But their other two trash units are really strong with... Uh, you know, having the really strong Halbs and the really good Hussars. Uh, it's not like I would say their Hussars are top tier, 
but they're definitely above average. Their halibs are among the very best in the game. So I would say that, you know, once we're looking to this uh, these top three tiers, you're looking at sieves that are generally speaking pretty comfortable in the late game. B -b 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 Byzantines S tier. Yeah, I don't really think that should be a surprise to anybody. Byzantines, having your halibs and skirmishers cost minus 25% is absolutely enormous. I mean, it's not just 25% food or wood or whatever. It's just minus 25%. And that just means you can spam so many units. Your strong defenses on your buildings also mean that it's really hard to dislodge a Byzantine player in the late game. And just in a practical sense, it's really difficult to get efficient trades versus Byzantines because they're just churning out so many cheap units that can get a lot of bonus damage in. Now, you do miss Blast Furnace and you do miss Bloodlines for your Hussars, but you have everything else, which means that you do have fully upgraded Skirmishers and you have the next best thing to fully upgraded Halbs. And it's really just the Hussars that are kind of underwhelming, but still you have the Hussar upgrade and they do have plus four defense and husbandry, so it's not like it's the end of the world by any means. Just certainly a strong S tier sieve. K -k -k Kilt's gonna be in the D tier. Again, this is not really an area where Kelts shine. They love being in the late game where they have gold. When gold runs out, Kelts are a little bit sad. Your skirms are among the very worst in the game. They're worse than Turk skirms in some instances. Uh, you miss Bracer, you miss Ring Archer armor and Thumb Ring. Altogether is very, very sad. You do have the faster working Lumberjacks, which can be useful, but it's only a little bit faster in post imp because you don't have Treadmill Crane. Um, you do have Hussars, but they miss Bloodlines and uh, Plate Barding Armor, so they are somewhat fragile, although they, they can be usable. Um, but you do still have really good Halberdiers, and that certainly saves them from F tier, and the fact that they, you know, they have Hussars at all. Um, but yeah, their halibs being very speedy, it's just a strong option for the sieve and is a core part of a lot of their late game armies. So as you'll see, some of these D tier sieves, they do have like one option that's really strong, but then the other two options are just pretty lackluster with their skirmishers in the case of Celts being like really, really lackluster. But yeah, D tier for them. Chinese going to be in the B tier. So Chinese... They don't really have any, like, specific bonuses to their trash, except that they have all the techs, except for Hussar. Um, but fully upgraded Skirmishers, fully upgraded Halbs, and then Light Cav that are fully upgraded. And then on top of that, you have the cheaper technologies, which is really important when it comes to fleshing out your tech tree in the late game. Because it means that Chinese are more easily able to adapt to whatever their opponent is throwing at them and then can go for, you know, whatever counter unit they need to to help close out a game. We see this all the time with the Civ, whether it be with, you know, t making a late game tech switch into Skirmishers or into Halbs or into Light Cav. The Civ can do that quite comfortably, although you are just lacking for, you're lacking those uh, extra special bonuses to bump you up into the A tier. Cumans going to be going into the A tier, speaking of Civs that get bumped to the A tier. So Cumans, they have just fully upgraded Halberdiers, just you know, fully upgraded halves, always nice. Skirmishers that are fully upgraded, except for Bracer, which is why they are not in the S tier. But this is where uh, they can shine. Your Hussars are fantastic. They are 5% faster than other civilizations. You can build them from stables that are cheaper and also skirmishers from archery ranges that are cheaper. So it's easy to just really get that spam going in the late game. And then it is... Uh, with Step Husbandry, you can just train Hussars so, so quickly. You can just have those guys running around everywhere like they just don't care and just tear apart your opponent's economy that way. So your Hussar spam in the late game with Cumans is absolutely fantastic. You have that Halb, uh, you know, component of your army, which is really helpful in when you're facing other strong cavalry sieves. And especially if, uh, you know, it's going into late game, you don't have heavy camels. So having access to those Halberdiers becomes very relevant for the sieve. Uh, especially because Kipchaks also don't do well versus Heavy Cav. So Cumans, I, I certainly think, are going to be a strong A-tier um, trash sieve. Dravidians! This might surprise some people, but I'm going to put them in the B-tier. Yeah, that's right. They have two really strong trash options and then a sad trash option. Your Halberdiers, they cost, um, their upgrades cost minus 50%, and when it comes to Halberdier itself, it means it costs 150 food and 300 gold, as opposed to 300 food and 600 gold, which is, you know, really huge as far as the savings goes. 
Um, you have skirmishers that are fully upgraded and attack faster, so your skirms will easily win other skirm fights and will just be really strong against archers in general. You notice higher DPS is, is really handy. Oh yeah, you also, your halves uh, have the Woot Steel upgrade, so they will ignore enemy armor if you can get that upgrade, which will essentially turn them into like mini Burmese halves, because they'll probably be getting between like three to five extra damage, which is really, really good. So two really strong trash options, and then you have some of the saddest light cavalry in the game. It does benefit from Woot Steel as well, but you're missing like almost all the important upgrades. You're missing Bloodlines, you're missing Husbandry, you're missing Hussar, and you're missing Plate Barding Armor. So not exactly the best in the speedy department, but I just can't ignore the fact that their Halbs and their Skirmishers are so strong that I do think that actually is enough to justify them getting into the B tier. Next is going to be the Ethiopians, and they will be in the C tier. I mean, not like the worst trash in the world, but it's not something they excel at. You get uh, fully upgraded halberdiers, including the free pikemen upgrade. You get um, fully upgraded elite skirmishers. And then you get hussars that uh, miss bloodlines and plate barding armor. So your hussars are really not like the greatest in the world. They're the same as Celt hussars. But unlike Celts, uh, Ethiopians at least have the fully upgraded uh, halberdier and skirmisher lines. So... That's something. You're not really with any major bonuses. I mean, getting pikemen for free is nice, but you don't get halb for free anymore for like the past six years or something like that. So that's Ethiopians. I would say they're, you know, on the slightly below average side, but it, it's still serviceable. Ethiopians, kind of like Britons and Bohemians, they're just not fast civs in the late game because they don't have that strong cavalry or cav archer option. Franks, gonna be going into the D tier. Their trash is not where they excel. Uh, yes, the save is really strong at like getting that early momentum and applying pressure and all that good stuff. But when the gold runs out, you're left with skirms that are the same as Celt skirms, aka arguably the worst in the game, missing bracer and ring archer armor and also thumb ring. It just means y your skirmishers are the next best thing to just not viable in the late game. Missing even one of the you know skirmisher upgrades in late game is so so important in terms of how useful the unit is. And missing both is like super oh no. Uh, your light cav, you miss Hussar. They don't have even the same amount of HP they would if they had bloodlines. You just cap out at 72 HP as opposed to 80. So it's like they're even worse than Chinese light cav. Yes, with chivalry, they can be produced super fast, but that just feels like a very sad version of the Cuman Hussar spam. Uh, and then really your only decent point is your generic fully upgraded halberdiers, which are certainly going to be a solid component to your army as Franks, but not really just a situation where the Civ really shines. Goths, gonna be going in the C tier as well. You have halberdiers, which are really cheap, can train super fast, but miss the last armor upgrade, but still your halb spam as Goths is absolutely fantastic. Uh, your elite skirmishers just missed the thumb ring upgrade, so it's not really the end of the world. If you need skirmishers as goths because you can't afford huskarls or something like that, then your your skirmishers will be doing just fine. Uh, your hussars miss plate barding armor, which is definitely painful, but you do at least have all of the other upgrades, including bloodlines, hussar itself, blast furnace, husbandry, all that stuff. Goths don't need a ton of gold to succeed, but they do like having a little bit at least to work with, and... Yeah, having, you know, not quite fully upgraded skirmishers or hussars does make them feel a little bit eh. And why I'd put them a bit below average as opposed to, you know, these civs, which I'd put a little bit above average. Uh, but still, the help spam is very helpful. And then the nice thing with Goths in the late game is that you just don't need that much gold because, yeah, your army is, is quite cheap. But you do need some gold, really, to, to shine. Gujers, everybody's favorite civ on the ladder. S tier, right? Nope, F tier. No, I'm serious. Gujur Trash is absolutely terrible. This is a sieve that just wins all their games in Castle Age, so you don't ever really have to acknowledge the fact that your trash is so bad. <laughs> uh, your Spearmen are the worst fully upgraded unit in the entirety of Age of Empires. You are missing Pikemen, Blast Furnace, Halberdier, Squires. So, like, your Spearmen are basically unusable. Your Skirmishers miss the Ring Archer Armor upgrade, which is pretty darn relevant. Um... And you have Hussars, which can be 25% cheaper with uh, Kshatriyas, but, oh, wait a minute, you miss Blast Furnace, so it's like, nah. It's like, really, all three of your trash options have some sort of issue. When your best trash option is your Hussars that are, yes, they're cheaper, and I would certainly prefer Gujur Hussars to Frank Lightcav, 
it still just doesn't feel great. This is a sieve that it needs gold to really thrive. Thankfully, they just win all their games in Castle Age, so it, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but yeah, this is just not a sieve that you love taking to super late game uh, in really any sort of setting. Hindustanis. Now, if we are talking about the current patch, I would put them in B tier. Um, you have all the upgrades except for plate mail armor, which is certainly unfortunate. You love having your halbs able to better survive against arrow fire. Uh, but you have hussars that get a little bit of bonus damage versus buildings and just fully upgraded skirmishers. That's all fine and dandy. However, in the next patch, just as I'm recording this, uh, it's confirmed that Hindustanis will lose the halberdier upgrade, which I think is enough to bump them down to C tier. As of right now, in recording this, I do think they're in B tier because you do have access to Halberdier, but when you take that away, you're looking at really bad pikemen, like really bad pikemen, and fully upgraded skirmishers and hussars, which are certainly nice, but kind of like how Britons have good skirmishers and halberdiers but miss the strong light cav, Hindustanis, they have good hussars and they have good skirmishers but miss the strong halberdiers. So I'm going to put them in C tier simply because, you know, if... I assume the patch is coming out soon, so if you're just watching this video, you know, at any point in the, like, I don't know, two weeks afterwards, three weeks, something like that, uh, then, you know, you'll be encountering, uh, not Kujers, uh, Hindustanis that have the weaker uh, trash line. So we're going to put them in C tier, but just note that if we're talking about the live patch as I'm recording it, it would be B tier. Huns. I was kind of going back and forth between C and D tier on this one, uh, but I did eventually land on D tier. If you really feel like Huns deserve C tier, I'm not going to call you crazy. Uh, they're kind of borderline. You have Halberdiers that are fully upgraded except for the plate mail armor upgrade, which is kind of a pain. You have elite skirmishers that are fully upgraded minus the ring archer armor upgrade, which is kind of a pain. Uh, but you do have fully upgraded Hussars that are also produced faster, which is really handy. And Huns, kind of like Berbers and like really like any strong Cav Archer Civ, they have just a very efficient late game army with all of their Cav Archers being able to retain value super effectively. So maybe that is like making my opinion towards Huns like bias and like why I maybe see them wanting to push C tier. But I still can't justify putting a Civ above D tier that doesn't really have amazing halbs, although they do have halbs at all, which is relevant. Um, or they don't have amazing skirmishers, although they are kind of serviceable. I don't know. This is definitely a borderline pick. Inca's F tier. Yeah, they don't have hussars or any sort of food dump. That's kind of an issue. Your skirms are fully upgraded, your halbs are fully upgraded, so I do think they're stronger than Aztecs in, like, the F tier spectrum, but I would... I would rather have bad skirmishers or, you know, bad hussars or bad light cav or whatever, rather than not having them at all. <laughs> and that's just kind of what Incas and the other American civs uh, have to live with. Yes, your skirms are fully upgraded and can also not have minimum range, and they also have extra line of sight, I guess, alongside your fully upgraded halbs. But Incas, they're a civ that like having some amount of gold. Kind of like uh, Goths, they don't need that much gold to be effective because their armies are so efficient, but they do like having some gold, uh, at least just to make their, their strong counter units. But their strong counter units are all gold intensive. When the gold is completely out on the map, you just don't have that way to just really raid your opponent. And it means that with all three of the American civs, if you're in late game, you are 100% at the mercy of your opponent in terms of where they want to take fights, you know, as long as the game is relatively even. And you know, I have casted this, you know, enough times, I've played this enough times to know that not having any sort of scout line at all is just a huge, huge issue for these civilizations. So still pretty decent in the late game in general, but again, once you're getting to that gold is very low situation, then uh, the Inca trash is meh. Italians. Uh, again, I was kind of debating between C tier and B tier, I am going to land on C tier, and, you know, this is why. Hear me out on this one. Um, you have fully upgraded Hussars, no bonuses. Um, fully upgraded Elite Skirmishers, no bonuses. And you have Pikemen that are fully upgraded, except you don't have Halberdier. But you have your Genoese Crossbowmen, so you still do have strong anti-cavalry options, but of course Genbos can be really tricky to get to. Now, like Chinese, they just miss one upgrade. But I would rather miss Hussar than miss Halberdier. Like... Hussars are better than Light Cav, but Halberdiers are exceptionally better than Pikemen. 
I mean, you just get that uh, an additional 10 bonus damage against cavalry, which is obviously enormous. You, of course, get the extra HP and the attack, all of that very good as well. And uh, Chinese also have the cheaper text, so they're able to make those transitions a bit easier. So it's like when we're sort of trying to at least compare civilizations on relatively even-ish footing, uh, I do have to say that Italians are going to not look quite as nice as, like, say, a civ like Chinese. And of course, they lack like the sheer power units that, say, Burmese and Dravidians have. Now, you could argue that Italians would be like at the top of C tier, and I think that is totally reasonable, but I don't think they quite make that B tier threshold. Oh boy, we have a lot of civs in the game right now to cover in just one little video. Uh, Japanese, gonna be in the B tier. Uh, you have very strong halberdiers with your faster attack speed, just super, super good. Uh, fully upgraded elite skirmishers, no bonuses or, you know, penalties or anything like that. And then you have light cav that miss, uh, hussar and, bl uh, not, not bloodlines anymore. You miss hussar and you miss plate barding armor. So, again, kind of like, uh, Dravidians, you have the stronger infantry and skirmisher component, but weaker cav component. I would say that, you know, your skirmishers aren't as good as Dravidian skirmishers. Your halbs are both super good, um... Japanese light cav are obviously a lot more usable than Dravidian light cav, so, you know, I'd say that this is a pretty decent ballpark for Japanese. Solid, you know, late game options, but still not quite as great as far as the uh, mobility aspect. Khmer, these guys are going to be going in the B tier. So, Khmer, your halbs are definitely not anything to write home about. At least you have halbs, which is, you know, fair enough, but you miss plate mail armor and you miss squires, which is really annoying, so your halbs are slow and they don't have the greatest armor in the world, which means they are quite vulnerable to ranged units. Your skirmishers are fully upgraded except for Thumb Ring, which isn't really that big of a deal with skirmishers. Your hussars are fully upgraded, but the big thing with Khmer is just the late game eco that fuels that trash production. All three trash units cost food, and guess what? Khmer have like some of the very best late game food eco with their farmers not needing drop off sites, and you just have that food trickle coming in. So when you have like 80 farms, all of 80 of those farms are perfectly efficient. No other Civ can do that. Like, it is not humanly possible to have perfect farms in a real setting in a post-imp 1v1. I don't care what kind of, you know, 2k78. That, that's not actually that great. Whatever. I don't care how good of a player you are. You're not having, like, perfect farms in the late game unless you are Khmer, which just means you can in a realistic sense, produced so many trash units, especially those Hussars, which you can just run around everywhere and kill your opponent's eco. Skirm's totally serviceable as well. The Halbs are really what uh, keep you far behind and I think prevent you from getting into that A tier. And also just a more direct bonus to your units in general, right? Like you have the fantastic eco, but you don't really have a military bonus for your trash. Still, I do think they are in B tier. Koreans, I will be putting them in the C tier. Maybe you could justify B tier. Again, they're kind of at like one of the higher C tier positions. Um, you have halberdiers that are fully upgraded, um, except for Blast Furnace. You have skirmishers that are fully upgraded and also get the armor upgrades for free. And you have hussars that miss Blast Furnace, Plate Barding Armor, and Bloodlines. Ugh, that's really painful. Um, so neither Imperial Age Cavalry upgrade, like, that is... And Bloodlines, like... That's all really, really painful. Now, what does save them is that you'd at least have halbs that are decent, skirmishers that are fully upgraded, and those units get a 20% uh, wood discount, which is really, really handy for, you know, sustaining trash unit spam in a very long game. So that's why I think you could make an argument for, like, high C tier with this Civ, but I, I don't think it's quite good enough to make that B tier threshold. Lithuanians! Gonna be going into the S tier. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Lithuanian trash is really, really good. You have your halbs and skirmishers, which are really fast, uh, and you get the tower shields upgrade, which gives them plus two pierce armor. Now, that's not as great as it seems for your halberdiers because you miss blast furnace and plate mail armor, so your halbs are really fast, or even faster than Kelt halbs, but it's definitely the weakest point of this Civ's trash unit spam. But on the other hand, you have skirmishers that are among the very best in the game. They move faster and they can get the full 10 pierce armor, meaning that uh, arbalests and heavy cav archers only deal one damage to them, which is pretty darn sick. Um, and you have uh, your winged hussars. 
which, yes, Lithuanians miss Blast Furnace, but just by the way the winged Hussar stats work out, it's like you get a bit of a better version of regular Hussars, which also can get that little bit of uh, bonus damage versus gunpowder units, which can be quite helpful. So definitely Trash is an area in where Lithuanians excel. You have something going for you with all three of your Trash units, which is uh, pretty darn relevant. And yeah, I mean, you, getting Winged Hussar is more than makes up for losing Blast Furnace, in my opinion. Those, those guys are really sick. So Lithuanians certainly going to be one of the very best trash unit sims in the game. Joining them in S tier will be the Magyars. Uh, I was kind of debating a little bit because your Halbs are the same as Khmer Halbs. You're missing plate mail armor and you're missing um, Squires, which means that they are quite vulnerable to ranged attacks. But at least you have Halberdiers. Magyars, fully upgraded elite skirmishers. You have Hussars that cost minus 15%, um, just minus 15%. Uh, and th you just have the, the Magyar Hussar, though, which is an absolutely crazy, you know, trash unit. It's probably the single best trash unit. Yes, you need to make them from castles. Yes, you need to get the um, Corvinian army unique tech, but it's, a, you know, a military unit that doesn't cost gold or can potentially not cost gold. So that, that gets to count as a trash unit. Now, that doesn't mean you get to go for those guys in every single game, because, like I said, you do need castles, and Magyar defenses aren't really all that great. You know, they are kind of expensive to switch into, but even if you can't go for the Magyar Hussars, you still have discounted, fully upgraded regular Hussars, and, you know, you get the attack upgrades for free as well, which can be relevant uh, and quite nice. So that's why I think Magyars do get that S-tier spot, uh, just because you don't... Like, the... You have better than average Hussar spam, even without Magyar Hussars, and Magyar Hussars are like the icing on the cake. And, you know, you have the good skirms, and you have at least serviceable-ish halbs, so do think they get that S-tier spot. Oh, also, your uh, Cav Archers are fantastic for retaining value in the late game, but that's not really this tier list. Malay! Gonna be going in the A-tier. Malay A. So, uh, Malay... No real bonuses uh, for their trash units, but you do have fully upgraded skirmishers, fully upgraded halbs, and the option to go for your two-handed trash swordsman, which costs 65 food when fully upgraded. Two-handed swordsmen themselves have full upgrades except for champion itself, but that doesn't matter when they only cost food, because then you get a trash unit that kills all the other trash units. That said, your light cavalry are absolutely terrible. You miss uh, Bloodlines, Chain Barding Armor, as well as Plate Barding Armor, and Hussar. So, really bad Light Cav. You just don't have that mobility in the late game. But when it comes to, like, a pitched battle, Malay Trash is absolutely fantastic. And really, it's only, like, the S-tier civs that can, like, compete when it comes to just throwing units into the meat grinder in a, a closed map setting. So, Malay, I think they are a pretty easy A-tier. Having those trash two-handed swordsmen, as well as the fully upgraded halves and skirmishers, definitely, in general, make up for their really bad light cav, but not in all situations. <sighs> Malians gonna be going into the D tier. Post imp is not where Malians shine. That said, if you wanted to say C tier, simply based off of their gold lasting thirty percent longer, so you can like. Again, super easily make that transition happen, then I'm not going to call you crazy. But in a practical sense, you have Light Cav with Farimba, which can be really strong. They're like a little bit better than Hussars, generally speaking, but not by that much. Uh, your Skirmishers, though, they miss Bracer, and your Pikemen are absolutely terrible. They miss Blast Furnace and Halberdier. Yeah, you have extra Pierce armor, but uh, like Skirmishers and stuff get bonus damage against Pikemen anyway, so. It doesn't matter all that much. So, like, even against a Civ like Burgundians, who also get more gold to play with in any given game, like, Burgundians at least have decent Hussars and fully upgraded Halbs. Whereas, like, Malians, it's like your Skirmishers are kind of underwhelming, your Pikemen are, like, super bad, and even your Farimba Light Cav are only, like, a little bit better than generic Hussars, so... Again, if you wanted to say, like, Malian C tier and Burgundians D tier, like, these two Civs are kind of on the bubble, but... Mayans, turns out not having Hussars is pretty bad. Going to be going into the F tier. Again, Mayans, they do have longer lasting resources. You have more gold to play with, as well as wood. Um, and you have Hulche, Javelinier, Skirmishers, which can be really nice. Uh, getting that extra one damage, essentially. And you have fully upgraded Halbs, but just, again, not having any mobility to speak of is a huge, huge issue for the Civ. And it's just not... It's just not great. You don't really have... Uh, any way to dictate the game 
in the super long run. And, you know, your best rating unit, your Eagle Warrior, is super gold intensive, so it can be really difficult to sort of keep that pressure going, you know, past the one hour mark in a game. And Plumed Archers are going to be pretty nice for, like, staying alive, staying alive. But they do have kind of low damage, which can be a bit of an issue. I mean, like I said, mines are probably the top of F tier if I was really trying to sort these tiers, but I still don't think they quite make D tier just because it turns out having a food dump is really, really important. Mongols might be controversial, but I am going to put them in the D tier as much as I love the Civ. Um, you have Hussars, which can be better than fully upgraded generic Hussars, um, but they're only really better than your regular Hussars against melee units. Because you miss plate farting armor, it means that they're actually a little bit worse against most ranged units. So it's like your Hussars are kind of, sort of, better than fully generic. Let's just, you know, average it out at fully uh, upgraded generic Hussars. Um, your Pikemen don't have Halberdier, kind of an issue. And your Skirmishers miss Ring Archer armor, so that's also an issue. So you have the good Hussars. Your Skirmishers are, like, semi-serviceable. And, of course, again, Mangudai are really good at reser preserving their value, but... Trash is not really an area where the Civ shines. They like having some gold to play with. Persians going to be going into the A tier. Persians have very strong trash. Uh, you have fully upgraded halberdiers, fully upgraded hussars. You have skirmishers that are fully upgraded except for bracer. But hey, guess what? You have Kamandaran. You have your two-handed, not two-handed, your uh, trash crossbowmen. So with the Kamandaran unique tech, your crossbowmen will only cost 60 wood. They are fully upgraded except for Arbalest and Bracer. I know that sounds terrible, but when applied to a trash unit, it is actually not at all bad. And the Kamandar and Crossbowmen essentially become, like, better skirmishers against everything except skirmishers. But you also have skirmishers. I said the word skirmisher a little too much there. Um, but yeah, just having that on top of the fully upgraded Hussars and Halberdiers, Persians are certainly not going to be a sieve that's super uncomfortable in a full trash war setting. I will say that the gold units of Persians are pretty you know, difficult to maintain because it's like cavalry, you know, heavy cavalry and gunpowder, which can be sniped. So Persians can maybe struggle a little bit in like a, you know, generic post imp setting. But if it comes to down to the pure trash war, Persians are going to be absolutely solid. Poles. Oh, man. Um, I don't know, guys. C tier. Or sorry, D tier. But like, if you really, really you know, believe in the Winged Hussar than C-Tier. The thing is, the Winged Hussars are really, really strong. Like, they are a really good unit. But unlike Lithuanians, Poles don't have Halberdier at all, and they miss Ring Archer armor for their late skirmishers, so that's pretty bad. But you do also have a lot of gold to play with, as well as, like, a really good food income in the late game. You know what? I'm going to put them in C-Tier. Winged Hussar spam with Poles is absolutely insane. Your skirmishers are at least semi-usable. Yeah, missing pikemen is, or missing halberdier is kind of an issue, but you just have so much gold with your, you know, stone to gold bonus, and then you have the full work farming eco. I, I, I just see poles make all sorts of nonsense happen in post-imp scenarios, so, like, can't really blame them too much for that. So, yeah, I, I'm going to put them in C tier. It's still not the greatest thing in the world and if you're running against civs that have really strong anti-hussar options then you are going to be very very sad in the late game as poles but if that's not the case then your winged hussars will uh flippity flop flap flap you know soar over everything and uh kill stuff portuguese they are going to be going into the b tier so with portuguese you're looking at skirmishers that are fully upgraded halbs that only miss squires and light cav that only missed the hussar upgrade so your trash is i'd say like pretty solid but what puts portuguese over the edge is that you have uh the fatoria to infinitely generate you resources as well as the cheaper uh i guess the cheaper gold discount for you it doesn't like really affect your trash it's more of like your everything else except trash but it does mean that you can make your armies last longer which means that it it's pretty good still. And the Fatoria alone, I think, would justify putting these seven B tier. So, you know, you can keep the uh, the machine going forever pretty much with Portuguese, which is, is certainly worth mentioning. And the tech tree is pretty good. Um, there's nothing that's, like, terrible about it. Missing Squires is annoying, but it's not the end of the world. And at least you have fully upgraded Light Cav. It's not like they're, you know, super bad Light Cav. So uh, good enough. Good enough to be in B tier. 
Speaking of B-tier civs, the Saracens. Saracens, fully upgraded Hussars, fully upgraded Elite Skirmishers, and you miss Halberdier. So that is certainly a bummer, um, but what puts them over, say, Italians is actually just the Saracen market. And that is pretty darn worthwhile because it means that you can just balance your eco to whatever you need to do to get like certain upgrades for the units. And then in like super late game scenarios, you can just spam those uh, Hussars and uh, Skirmishers however long you need to. And you're, you know, same exact tech tree line as Italians, but I think getting that Marcus market bonus really does put them over the top and, you know, sneaks them into the B tier. Sicilians. Um, this one's kind of weird, kind of hard to quantify, but I am going to put them in B tier. Maybe after the next patch where they will get their uh, bonus damage reduction reduced from minus 50% to minus 33%, maybe they'll fall down to C tier, but I don't have any real games of experience on that patch, so it's kind of hard to say. You have fully upgraded halberdiers, elite skirmishers that just miss um, ring archer armor, and you have light cav that are fully upgraded except for hussar. But again, all of those units are taking less bonus damage, which means that the counter units themselves are more difficult to counter, which is certainly, you know, th that has a lot to be said for it. Um, but with that in mind, you are still missing some important upgrades for your units like hussar and ring archer armor. In fact, exactly those two. Um, you do have the farms that last a super long time, which can be helpful in really drawn out games and trash wars, but that's not really going to be the case. All It's not going to matter all of that often. Um, and I don't really think there's anything that would really justify putting them in A tier, but I do think that they are a pretty strong B tier trash sieve. Getting to the end here. Also in B tier, we're just keeping this train going, is going to be the Slavs. Slavs have the really strong late game farmers, because your farmers just work faster even after handcart, which is really helpful for trash units, which again, all cost food. Um, you have fully upgraded halbs that can get Drusina, so they deal blast damage, can be really, really, really strong. Hussars that are fully upgraded and just love having that food income from your farms. And then you have skirmishers that miss Bracer and also um, Thumb Ring. So... That's definitely why they're not in A tier or higher, but still, at least you have Ring Archer armor. And personally, I think that missing Bracer and missing Ring Archer armor are about the same as far as skirmisher value goes, and that they're both really bad to miss. So, but like, at least having one makes your skirm semi sort of viable. Yeah, I, I think Slavs are just a decent B tier. Good Hussar spam, good Halb spam, um, but you do need to get an expensive Drusian attack to get the Halbs, you know, really strong. So yeah, solid B tier. Spanish S tier. Spanish are the only Civ that have full upgrades on all their trash units. <laughs> you also have Supremacy Villagers, which can almost function like trash units, depending on the situation. No, they're not real combat units, but like you can kind of use them as such. If you're, uh, if you don't let your memes be dreams, but yeah, I mean, Spanish, you have full upgrades on all your trash units and also like the blacksmith discount is, is nice and long, you know, games where gold is an issue. So yeah, Spanish, definitely just a, a solid S tier sieve, if that makes sense. Tadars, also in the B tier. So yeah, Tadars, you have fully upgraded elite skirmishers, you have hussars that can get plus one, plus one armor. And you have halberdiers that miss chainmail armor and plate mail armor, so your halbs are really, really vulnerable to ranged units, but they will perform okay-ish versus melee units. Um, and then in, uh, like as far as your hussars go, they're very, very strong. Uh, your skirmishers are totally serviceable. You also have your extra downhill advantage with the civilization, which can be nice in really any stage of the game. From, you know, drushing all the way to post him trash fights. So I think Tatar is definitely a solid B tier entry. Again, like most Cav Archer civs, they are really good at preserving their gold value through uh, Keshex and Cav Archers. Two Tawns D tier. Uh, kind of like Celts, they have uh, very strong Halberdiers. Instead of, you know, two Tawn Halbs being faster, they get an extra two melee armor, which is quite helpful. Uh, but your Skirmishers miss Bracer and also Thumb Ring, and you don't have Light Cav. Or husbandry. Or hussar, obviously. So yeah, trash fights are not where Teutons excel. They are a sieve that like having a lot of gold. Their halbs are very strong, but just missing particularly strong options for the skirmishers and the uh the scouts. It, it is an issue. You do save a lot of wood in the late game with your cheap farms, but 
Yeah, not really enough to put them above D tier. Turks, F tier. Their hot star spams are really good. But unlike, say, you know, Teutons, you know, Teutons also have one strong trash option, or Celts, and then two other weak trash options. It's like, Turks have one strong trash option, and then almost unplayable other trash options. Like, Turk Spearmen and Turk Skirmishers missing Pikemen, Halb, and Elite Skirmisher, like, that is absolutely atrocious, and... It is very, 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 very rare that you ever want to make those units in the late game. Yes, there are some situations where you do want to make Turk Spearmen and Turk Skirmishers, but those situations are very rare, and even when you do want to make them, it is you're trying to make the best out of a very bad situation, not like an, oh, this is going to be a super powerful play with our Turk Skirms and Spearmen. Uh, that said, Turks with their gunpowder, uh, with the really long range and the Cav Archers, are very good at retaining their gold value, so I'd actually favor a sieve like Turks in the late game as opposed to Aztecs, because all the Aztec units tend to die super easily, while also being very, like, gold-intensive, or even, like, Ethiopians. Whereas Turks, like, they can just keep their gold units alive really well, and then just spam all day every day with Hussars that are quite tanky with their extra pierce armor and free upgrades. Um, but this isn't, like, again, this isn't about a general post-imp thing, it's more focused on the trash units. Okay, almost there! Vietnamese, gonna be in the B tier! So, Vietnamese, they have Imperial Skirmishers that also have extra HP. Very solid. Um, you have Halberdiers that just miss Blast Furnace. Totally serviceable. You have Light Cav that miss Blast Furnace and Hussar. Slightly less awesome. You do have the new, um version of Paper Money, which gives your Lumberjacks uh, a gold trickle, similar to uh, Burgundian Vineyards. And, like, the in general, Vietnamese trash is a lot stronger than Burgundian trash. So I do think that they're kind of on the upper end of B tier, but I don't really think they're good enough to make it into A tier. Like, Imp Skirms are really good, but your Light Cav aren't that amazing. And your Halbs, although totally fine, do miss that Blast Furnace upgrade, which is pretty relevant um, just because Halbs have very low base attacks, so when they're whenever they're attacking something that is not cavalry, or camels, or elephants, uh, having Blast Furnace is really important. This includes fighting other halberdiers, this includes, like, jumping in on skirmishers or something like that, or fighting buildings even. Uh, Blast Furnace becomes suddenly a very relevant upgrade in those situations. Um, still, though, when it comes to doing their job, it doesn't really matter that much. So Halbs still good against cavalry, right? But yeah, I think uh, B tier for Vietnamese. And last but not least is going to be the Vikings. <sighs> oh, boy. Mm. On the pre-prepared tier list I had, I have them in D tier. You have Skirmishers that are fully upgraded minus Thumbring, which isn't too big of a deal. You have not Halberdiers, but your Pikemen have extra HP, and they can get extra bonus damage versus Cavalry, which kind of makes up for not having Halberdier, but not quite. And then you have really bad Light Cav. Their post-imp is really not that great. Is it as bad as Gujur's? Well, no, they actually... Their light cav are better than Gujur's spearmen, or Turk skirmishers, or Turk spearmen. And unlike the American civs, they have light cav to make it all. And I think it was Hidden Cup... Whatever the last Hidden Cup was, Jordan versus Mr. Yo, they had like a two-hour long game of Arabia. It was like Vikings versus Mayans, and Jordan was able to win with Mayan or with Vikings over Yo's Mayans because he had light cav to spam and Yo didn't, and just having that food dump is so important. So I think I will put Vikings in D tier, uh, but they do kind of just get to eek by in D tier. They're really not the uh, the post imp uh, powerhouse. Um, but that's going to be it, guys, for this trash unit tier list. Definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments. You know, what uh, Sibs, do you really like playing and not really like playing when the gold runs low in a post-imp 1v1, or I guess in team games in certain situations? But thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.